Hello friends and welcome back. Welcome back to our little coffee club. Uh, I had told you guys that I was gonna experiment some more with this uh, coffee here and I wanted to try it as a pour over. Now, I know this is probably not my cup of tea, okay? Yes. You guys know that for pour overs, I definitely prefer lighter roast. So something medium to light or really light roast, that's usually my preference as far as pour overs. But hey, you gotta experiment. I gotta let some people know out there, maybe somebody runs into this video and they wanna know if this works as pour over. So I'm gonna see if, uh, if it works. Now my best hope of getting something good out of this, I imagine is going to be to grind it a bit coarser than I would normally do like a medium or a light roll. So I'm gonna go pretty coarse. I'm gonna grind it at 7.5, so 75 clicks on the Easy Presso K Plus hand grinder. So I'm gonna grind it at 75 clicks. Uh, the water temperature I'm gonna keep quite low for what I usually do. I mean, usually I'm uh, brewing lighter roast coffees, so that requires a lot hotter temperature. So I have the kettle, I believe I set it at 92. I'll take a look when I get out, uh, to the other counter and let you guys know, but I'm pretty sure it's at 92. And as far as timing, I'm gonna use the origami because I wanna keep this brew as fast as possible. And the origami, you can get some pretty nice brews at three minutes or maybe even below three minutes. So I'm hoping to get a fast extraction with a low enough water temperature and a coarse enough grind to make everything work. So we're gonna see if we can get a decent cup of coffee from this um, coffee here. You know, Lavazza is a company that's been making coffee for over 100 years. So this is an Italian company that knows a thing or two about coffee. Okay, so I imagine you can dial this in with the right techniques and get something pretty decent out of it. Okay, so as far as espresso, if you want your traditional Italian kind of taste profile, okay, this will do it for you. Okay, you can get some nice shots of espresso. It'll be sweet. It'll give you some perhaps like dark chocolate notes, maybe some, some caramel notes in there. And you know, that's what you can expect from this type of roast. So that's exactly what I was able to get from it. And again, if you want a lot of brightness, a lot of acidity, and some of those nuances that you get from single origin coffees where you can taste, you know, you can start getting into those more exotic tasting notes, let's call it, you're not gonna get that from here. Okay, by the time you roast the coffee to this kind of level, which is, I, I'm gonna call it like a true medium. This is not very, very dark. Uh, I'm gonna say it's like a medium to maybe slightly, just a little bit darker than medium roast. And it'll give you very tasty shots for mixing with milk. And now that's the main thing I'm gonna be using this for to make my cappuccinos. Uh, I've already made quite a few. As a matter of fact, I have been, since I wanted to experiment with this coffee further and I wanted to try to get those 25 seconds, <laughs> I kept experimenting with it. And I pulled some shots in the morning, uh, yesterday and today, and kept dialing it in, made some cappuccinos with it. It was pretty good and you guys will see it here on this video. Okay, so I didn't know exactly when I was gonna be using these shots, so in the video, in the clips, you'll hear, you'll, you will hear me saying that I'm not sure exactly when I'm gonna be using the clips, but it's gonna happen today. In today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and make this as a pour over and see what I can get from it. And I'll show you guys those couple of clips as I dialed in the coffee further to try to get the 25 seconds uh, as far as an extraction on the Brevo infuser. Now, one thing I had to do was to down those at 18 grams and grinding almost at 17, I was no longer able to uh, create the right gap between the grounds and the, and the shower screen of the group head. So the only thing you could do when that happens is you, you have to down those, just put less coffee so that you can tamp down far enough. So that's what I did. Uh, and you guys will see it, you'll see it in the clips, but I was able to get some, some really cool shots from it. But right now, let's see what we can do as, uh, as far as a pour over. Let's get to the other counter and grind some coffee and see what we get. Again, we're gonna go with the origami. Uh, we're gonna do my usual, a one to 15 ratio. So we're gonna grind 20 grams of coffee and we're looking to get out 300 grams. And hopefully we'll do that in no more than three minutes. 
and see what we get. Here we are at the other counter. Let's go ahead and start by dosing out our 20 grams. Now I'm gonna be grinding, like I said, on the K plus, and I'm already set at 75 clicks. This is seven and a half, so that's 75 clicks. And then you just line up the little red dot over the number. So this grinder has clicks. So you can either count the clicks or just kind of do that. <laughs> okay, so today we do get to use this and I am not gonna mess up. <laughs> Man, I gotta remember every time I'm doing espresso and grinding with the niche, <laughs> not to even bring this thing out. If you guys have been watching all of the videos, then you know what it is I'm talking about. Okay, so we're doing 20 grams. All right, 20 grams right on the dot. Okay, put the bag out of the way and on the other counter. Okay, so we have our 20 grams. You know, maybe today we'll check to see the retention. I I've done this already several times. There is no such thing as retention with this thing, but so that you guys will see, let's go ahead and tear this out. So it's at zero. Now, once we grind the coffee into here, it should have 20 grams. So let's see. I know how everyone enjoys checking retention on the grinders. It is kind of fun. Okay, so 75 clicks. This should go pretty quick, being that it's so coarse. I imagine it'll take me maybe like 20 seconds. All right, I'll put it here on the screen as to how long that took. Again, it's so much easier to grind medium uh, or darker rolls versus light rolls, light rolls. The beans are so dense, they're very hard to grind. All right, let's check retention. All right, it's reading 20.1, so, yeah. I'm gonna attribute that to some kind of deviation in the scale. I don't think it's really <laughs> a point one more, but who knows? Let me show you guys. All right, should be focused there. You can see we got a uh, 20.1, but this thing, there is no such thing as retention. This thing, you're gonna always be like right on the dot. It's one of the cool things about a hand grinder. Okay, so I think I had told you guys that the water temperature was at 92, but it's actually, I have it at 90. We're gonna try it at 90 again. I wanna keep that water uh, kind of not too hot so that we don't get any kind of uh, over extraction or stringent kind of flavors or burnt kind of flavors. And I think with the right technique, we might be able to get something decent here. So let's see. Okay, let's fold the filter. You guys know that I do like a lot more pour overs than espresso. Espresso is uh, mainly a weekend thing for me, but pour overs I make every morning. All right, we're using the origami. It's one of the fastest brewers that you can get. The filter is just a run of the mill Ario V60 uh, filters that you buy at the supermarket or you could get them online. So step number one, we're gonna rinse out the filter. And sometimes you have a little papery flavor. I think that, you know, by the time you make the coffee, you're not gonna be able to taste that. But uh, it also helps the filter to stick to the walls of the, of the brewer and it starts to get everything warm. And now that I think that's a good idea. Then what I always do is take that warm water fr from the carafe and put it into the glass and starts to heat up the glass. So that's my usual routine. All right, here we go. Okay, so just make sure that the filter is sticking to the walls. Okay, now we're gonna get the hot water, put it into the cup.
that's gonna start heating up the cup. Okay, here's our 20 grams. Even out the bed of coffee. And then now we're gonna make the divot. I just use a regular wooden chopstick to make a divot in the metal here. I've shown this in you know, a lot of the other videos. I'm not gonna get into all of that today. But if you want to see what that's all about, <laughs> go ahead and watch some of the other videos. You'll see what the reasoning behind it. Okay, now we have our coffee there and our divot. Make sure the scale's on zero. I threw the water out. You know, always double check, make sure you want. Oh, that's right. I always, you know, I always put it into the cup, but you know, always make sure that your carafe is empty or you might brew into the water that you used to rinse the filter. So it's another good, good uh, thing of why putting the hot water into the cup to start getting it hot. So that way that never happens to you, but always double check. Okay, so make sure you're at zero, start the timer. Okay, and we do our first pour. Right in the middle. And then go all the way around until you hit 100 grams. Okay. On my first pour, I never do any agitation. I just kind of let it do its thing there. I know that's a lot of water for a blooming. Most people do uh, double the weight of whatever your grounds are. So in this case, I have 20 grams of grounds. Uh, a lot of people would do the bloom with 40 grams of water. So I just keep it nice and simple, three pours of 100 grams, and it works for me. Okay, so that's drained out. Let's go with the second pour. Now on the second pour, you just go all the way around, make sure you wash all the coffee into the metal. Just keep going all around. Once you hit your 200, we do some agitation. Now when you do agitation, your, usually your brew is gonna slow down. So you're gonna have to account for that with your grind size. Okay, that's what we're looking like. And this is quite coarse, I gotta say. Again, I usually don't go to 75 clicks. I'm usually more like somewhere between uh, 60 and 65. All right, it's drained through. Let's go with the third pour. See if I can get this with the foam for you guys. Just wash everything off the sides. Keep going till you're at 300 grams. Nice and slow. Take your time. All right. Now to get a nice flat bed at the end, I do a little more agitation after my third pour. Just a little. That's gonna make things nice and tidy there at the end, you'll see. So that's our final drawdown. We're at two and a half minutes. I'm hoping that in about 30 seconds we'll be done. We might get there. Okay, so now I'm done with the carafe. I'm just gonna turn it off. But there you see, actually water temperature, it's, it's really 93, although you could see that it's supposed to hold at 90, but now there's very little water in the carafe and that's usually what happens. That doesn't happen when you have plenty of water in there. Okay, we're calling it. Let me see. No, not yet. All right, we're almost ready to call it here. Now we went over three minutes, so again, the only thing I could do is grind it a little bit coarser if I want a faster. We're gonna call it at 320. It's pretty much done. So three minutes and 20 seconds. It's nice and dry and flat, you see? That's what the bed ended up like. Okay, let's give it a let's give it a taste test. Okay, let's give it a taste test. My first pour over with this coffee. You know, I'm not expecting a whole a whole lot here, but but I think with the right technique, maybe we can get something decent. So let's give it a try. A nice swirl.
Okay, cheers. I hope you guys are brewing something tasty. Let's see what we got. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, no, it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> this is, you know what it tastes like? <laughs> let me try it. Again, it's quite hot. Maybe I should, I, maybe I should let it cool a bit, but. And again, maybe if I get like below three minutes, this is something you gotta dial in, you know, you gotta play with it. Uh, again, it's part of the reason why I got into pour overs instead of just using a dripper, because for the longest time I just used a dripper, an automatic dripper, is because with, you know, with pour overs, you can control the variables. You can control the water temperature, the time, the grind size, all these kind of things you control. And a lot of times you can change things drastically. Like I showed you guys with that Starbucks coffee, where it showed like when I did the comparison, it showed like the worst one as far as pour overs. But then by the end of the day, after I dialed it in, I, I loved it. I thought it was the second best. <laughs> so again, totally different profile. Okay, it was that coffee is like very sweet. And usually, you know that for pour overs, I like something with a lot of brightness, acidity, uh, the nuances that you get from lighter rows. And you know, one of the reasons why I like that Duncan one, because you get a lot of acidity. You do get some tasting notes. Um, de definitely there's brightness in that coffee. So <laughs> let's, okay, it's had a chance to cool a little bit. Let's try it again. All right, second try. All right, a little better. As, it, as it's cooling, it's getting a little better. But I do, <laughs> I do have to say, you know what this tastes like to me? A lot like the Starbucks regular roast. To me, this tastes a lot like the Starbucks, the, just a regular roast. And again, to, <laughs> it's just like, there's just like coffee flavor. There's no, um, well, there's, there's, there's no acidity whatsoever. Let me, let me <laughs> I'm surprised. I thought it was going to be like closer to something that I, I thought I could do better. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And you know, and as espresso is fine. As espresso is fine, even as a straight shot, okay? It's not, again, like maybe my favorite thing, but but it's okay, it's it's all right. If you want that traditional Italian espresso uh, flavor, if you wanna get, um, you know, if you wanna mix it with, with milk, then with milk, it's definitely is super good. With milk, just if you wanna make milk drinks and you see this at the supermarket, perfectly okay, go for it. For pour overs, <laughs> oh my God. It's like that regular Starbucks. You go to Starbucks, have the regular, just a regular roast. This, and you know what? You're watching me in here and maybe you like that. I, I don't know. The, the only way I drink those coffees is with uh, cream and sugar. There's no way I'm having black coffee. Now they're blonde roast. That one, it's fine. It's okay. And if you make it at home, it's really good. Uh, and <laughs> again, what you guys saw in the comparison. So. When I made it at home and I dialed it in just the way I wanted it, it was delicious, it was great. But this one is just like the Starbucks, their regular roast, that all you get is like that coffee flavor, intense, some little bit of bitterness. It, again, it, it might be uh, still a, a bit over extracted even though I went coarse and I used, um, you know, cooler water and all that stuff. Uh, you know, I just have to get a faster brew time. I think I have to probably get it below three minutes. So maybe grind it at eight and you know, water temperature at 90 should be fine. So I would leave that at 90, grind it at eight and then see if I get something closer to or just below three minutes. As it cools, it becomes somewhat decent you know if i go to a diner somewhere my local denny's and i have breakfast they give me this you know i'll have it i'll drink it but yeah it's nothing like what we're used to <laughs> like i always say specialty is a little bit more special okay but it doesn't have to be specialty you can get a nice lighter roast at your local uh, you know local roaster whatever that may be or even at the supermarket you know try that that Duncan that I'm always raving about or something 
Wow, it's just that at the market, even though they say light roast, they're not. I mean, that, that Starbucks one, that Starbucks one, the Verenda uh, blend, the, what they call the blonde roast, that coffee is supposed to be light roast, but it's more like medium to dark, and <laughs> that's their light roast. The Dunkin', the Dunkin' coffee is lighter than that, you know, and that, Dunkin' calls it a medium, and I would call that medium to light. It's a little bit lighter than most mediums you find out there, so. Okay, so this, you know, as pour over, you know, I don't know, <laughs> depends. If you like just, uh, just like coffee flavor and nothing else, just like very in your face coffee flavor, this is it. <laughs> Most of us that are watching this video, you know, we like the little, little nuances that you get from uh, lighter, single origin, specialty coffees out there. And you get, you get a little bit something extra. You really do. And you know, but for making milk base, I'm gonna call it perfectly okay. Perfectly fine. You wanna pull shots, mix it with milk and do your lattes, cappuccinos, cortados, anything like that perfectly fine, it's good. Uh, if you want just the straight shots and you dial it in right, it's still pretty good. I mean, but again, be, <laughs> you're gonna get just like your traditional kind of Italian flavor, okay? You're gonna get a little bit of, maybe like a little bit of dark chocolate in there and with, with some sweetness, there's some sweetness to it. And you know, you can, you can have a pretty decent shot. You're not gonna get all that brightness, acidity, and the little nuances of flavors that you get from a lighter rose from your specialty coffees. But, all right, so I'm gonna include somewhere here, if you haven't seen it yet, maybe it'll be after this. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm gonna break this up, but I am gonna include the couple of clips that I filmed um, as I was trying to dial this in and trying to get that 25 second extraction. <laughs> Um, and you guys will get to see that. Okay, I'm gonna include the clips right here. Uh, the first one you're gonna see, uh, I, got a, I got a pretty close to what Michael had told me, but you'll see that the scale did not time the shot. I'll give you guys the time from the recording. All right, I'm gonna try to uh, pull another shot here and see if we can get the timing uh, closer to the 25 seconds. So let's dose out 18 grams. He went a little bit over. Okay, we're between 18 and 18.1. Let's see if we get any retention from the niche. Okay, so I forgot, I'm going to down dose. I'm gonna actually down dose this one. I'm going to down dose to 17.5 because it was becoming very difficult to tamp uh, because it's kind of coarse. So if you can, if you can't have the right gap between the grounds and the group head of the machine, uh, meaning that you can no longer tamp it far enough down so that they don't come in contact, then maybe you should down those so that when you tamp down, you create the correct gap between the ground coffee and the group head. They should not touch. So we need a, a little, at least a minimum gap there so that uh, the water has a, a chance to uh, saturate the grounds evenly and flow over the, the whole entire uh, bed of coffee there. So that's why I down those, I'm at 17.5 and I increased my setting on the niche by just a little bit. Let's call it, let's call it 16.75. So I'm right in between 16 and a half and 17. So let's call it 16.75 and let's see if we can get the timing more close to the 25 seconds. Let's see. Okay, we're exactly at 17.5, so exactly what we put in is what we got out. Let's go ahead and do some puck prep. Dry the portal filter, dosing ring. With these darker rolls, um, usually you're gonna have to grind a little bit coarser 
in my experience, with lighter rolls, you always have to, or usually you're gonna end up grinding them finer in order to create the, the proper resistance. So again, we keep going coarser and coarser so we could get the timing down. Although the shots have been delicious, uh, I do want to get something closer to what uh, Michael was telling me. So we're going to go ahead and try with a dose of 17.5. See if we can get closer to the 25 seconds. Okay, distribute. Tamp. I don't think I'll be able to press down any farther with this, but let's let's check. No, pretty much it didn't go down at all. But let's see if that half a half a gram makes a, a difference on our shot timing. If not, the only other thing I could do is uh, maybe I'll go down to 17 and keep going a little bit coarser, go up to maybe 17 on the niche and then try it there. But let's see what we get now. Let me get the scale in there. Okay, I'm gonna make a cappuccino with these shots, so I'll, I'm gonna uh, brew into my cappuccino cup here. All right, so we got our A flashing. All right, it should tear. All right, let's do some pre-infusion. Again, we're gonna keep it, you know, five, six seconds, something like that. Go to full pressure. Okay, this is definitely gonna be faster. Oh man, in the machine, <laughs> it didn't time it. I'm gonna have to, okay, so we, we ended right at, well, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> But we ended right at 39.8, as you guys saw, 39.8. So I got my 40 grams. I'm gonna look on the recording and see how long that took to brew. Again, every now and then we have a little hiccup with the scale. All right, let's taste it. And I'll let you guys know in just a second how this tastes. And now what I, my plan is to incorporate this into either this, this video where I open the bag of uh, Lavazza or maybe into an upcoming future video, but I had a, a moment here to, to uh, brew a shot and I wanted to get it closer and I think I did. So I just gotta look at the timing. You know what? I do think it's better. I do think it's better. I now have a little bit of acidity. Very smooth, very smooth. Um, I have to say it's, um, even for drinking like a straight shot, I could I could enjoy this for sure. Uh, definitely for milk base, I think it's where it's at with this uh, particular roast here, this Lavazza Rosa. Uh, again, you know, one of the biggest uh, coffee companies in the world, they've been around for over a hundred years, so they gotta be doing something right. So being that this coffee is very inexpensive, you know, I think uh, definitely give it a shot, especially for your milk based drinks. Uh, and if you want that traditional, uh, tasting espresso, then definitely this is uh, a good one to try. And um, you know, I'm surprised I'm not getting as much crema bean that it has some Robusta beans in there. Uh, I'm surprised usually they give you a little bit more crema. Uh, yes, I, I gotta say, Michael, at, at 25 seconds, I think it is a, a little bit better. I don't know, actually, I don't know if it was 25 seconds. I doubt it, it was exactly 25 seconds, but I'll put it here on the screen, whatever it was, and uh, I'll keep playing around with this coffee and report back to you guys. So thank you for watching. In the next clip, again, I got really close to what uh, Michael had told me and everything worked perfectly. And you guys will see that clip as well here. Okay, I am going to pull another shot. Hopefully the scale is gonna work with us this time. Okay, here we go. Um, I ground the coffee exactly the same setting, 16.75, or at least that's what we're calling it on the niche, 16.75. And uh, again, I down those to 17.5. And what I put in is exactly what I got out. Let's see if we can get this uh, to time it and see if we get 25 seconds. Let's see. Okay, same like always on the pre-infusion. So we give it five, six seconds. 
All right, let's see. Okay, it is timing the shot and weighing the shot. So we're looking for 40 grams in about 25 seconds. Okay, it's gonna be close. Okay, 40.5 in 31. Wow, okay, that is uh, very, very, very close to the recipe. We're gonna roll with this. I wonder what the, the other shot was at, but I'll, you know, I'll look at it on the, on the camera and put it on the screen. But uh, yeah, we're really, really close. Let's taste it. I'm gonna stir it this time and everything. Again, the other shot was perfect, so. And even the longer shots, you know, the longer shots, I, I think the faster shot was a little bit better, but really all of them have been, you know, they've all been good. Again, this is a sweeter coffee. It's not gonna give you uh, the brightness and acidity that you get from a lighter roast. But I think for mixing with, uh, mixing it with uh, milk, uh, it's perfect. Let's taste it. Yeah, like the other one, thick, creamy, you do get a little tiny acidity um, the way it brewed here in, in a shorter time, in 30 seconds. Obviously, you do get a little bit uh, higher acidity and brightness. So this coffee is not very dark. I gotta say, it's, uh, it's more like a true medium. Yeah, definitely tasty, tasty coffee. And uh, I'll include this clip somewhere in either the, <laughs> the first video I'm gonna make on this coffee or on an upcoming video, but just wanted to report back uh, uh, for you guys. I think I got the timing down. Now again, I have to down those because if not, when I tamp, there's no way I can create the correct gap between the grounds and the um, screen of the, of the group head, the shower screen. So, because it's just too coarse, there's no way to press it down anymore. So, when that happens, then the only thing you could do to create the correct gap, you know, you do want at least a minimum gap on there. So to create that minimum gap, you're gonna have to down dose a little bit so you could tamp down far enough. And for, the, for now, it's dialed in. So we're just below 17 on the niche and using a dose of 17.5, we're getting 40 grams out in about 30 seconds and it's great. And I think I got it pretty close to what Michael was telling me. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. Again, uh, guys, thank you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. I appreciate your comments a whole bunch. I know Carrie never lets me down. She always comments on the video. I really, really thank you for that. I appreciate that. But hey, Jesse, I like to hear from you every now and then. Now we got Michael. We have a few people that I get to know the names if I see them. Joan, Joan has commented. Uh, you know, quite a few times. So as I see your names pop up more and more and we interact more and more, I get to, I get to know you guys a little bit, right? What you guys uh, brew with, what, what you guys are, uh, whether you like espresso more or you like pour overs or maybe where you're watching from, all that kind of stuff is really interesting to me. But anyway, I do appreciate you guys a whole bunch. Uh, welcome, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining our little coffee club. So I try to record um, a video on the afternoon, on the weekends, and I try to post it every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. So what I do is on Saturday night, I leave that uh, video posting and then I schedule it for 7 a.m. and it's always, it's always there so far. So I try to have a couple of videos uh, recorded that I can edit quickly or maybe have uh, halfway edited videos or something like that to where I know um, you know, push come to shove, I got something to offer you guys on a weekend when I'm gonna be out or something happens. So, again, I'm just a regular dude, okay? I'm not <laughs> like, a, like one of these YouTubers that lives off of making coffee and making videos. But I do appreciate my little team here. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Please give the video a like. Please subscribe to the channel if this is the very first video that you run into. And, uh, you know, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next week.